Hello everyone, welcome to RPA Fridays 28. This time we continue with the series about UiPath modern design experience activities. This is part number two about click activity. For those who don't know me, my name is Roman and I'm an RPA developer and also I do some courses and trainings on RPA. So if you want my help on your automation project, let me know. I'm part of Robot ICT, a company based in Czech Republic, where besides RPA, we also have our digital network and infrastructure automation product. So if you want to know more about us, please visit links in the descriptions. If you will like the video, I would appreciate you give it a like or subscribe to our channel. And of course, if you have any questions related to the topic, please ask them in the comments. So uh, this part two is following the part one that was about modern design experience, some introduction and then type into activity. So uh, I want to maybe do a little recap about general benefits of modern design experience. It's something that you can turn on or turn off for your projects in UiPath. So the one of the benefit is that it will make your process uh, more robust, uh, especially because it is natively uh, introducing uh, selector fallbacks, fuzzy and image. Uh, also, you may uh, come with the nicer code or nicer workflows because some of the uh, activities are uh, merged into another ones. So you will uh, end up having less activities used. Uh, the, the best benefit is if you are automating an application where you have uh, a lot of uh, when you have one application and a lot of things and you want to save this application to object repository and use it, you can only do it within the modern. And of course, if you don't know about object repository, I was talking about it in our RP Fridays number 10. Another uh, uh, advanced ability of modern is advanced data scraping techniques. So there are some in improvements, technical and of course, enhanced UI Explorer or maybe a target indicator. The UI Explorer is still the same, but when you are indicating new um, uh, the, the element that you want to click or work with, it's, it's improved and also improved uh, recorder. So many more things. But let's also talk about the general drawbacks. Well, the biggest one is that if you want to switch to modern and you were just till now using classic, then now you have to learn new things and that's that can be a little bit painful right it's a learning process it will feel different it will be um, something new so a different logic you have to learn new things that's a drawback but i mean uh, in general it's good to learn new things uh, one of the drawbacks that many people mention is that uh, ui activity so those that interact with user interface has to reside inside use application slash browser scope or activity uh, so they cannot go standalone you cannot have standalone click in the middle of somewhere and in general navigating in the selectors of the scopes and so on this can cause troubles but once you get into it and once you understand how these things works it gets easy however if you still feel like you're missing some classic activity something isn't working you can always use both of the activities in your project and i showed in the previous video how to do that so let's go and look at what we have today today i will cover activity click and uh, maybe you think it's quite nothing for one video but there are many things to talk about and you will see so definitely i will talk about some fallbacks uh, selector fallbacks which that also covers other activities but we will introduce it in this video about the verify execution which is a really nice tool and some differences i will cover between the classic click and the modern so let's get into that so as I said, one of the main difference between the classic and modern is that the click activity has to be used within the use application slash browser scope. And uh, that's from the previous video. This is where we end it. So I'm just uh, doing a little follow up on this one here and the activity is already in place. I indicated our website and now I will be showing you the click activity. So let's put the click activity in. Click this one. There you go. And let's indicate some element to click on. So once I click the indicate in, I will have a whole new target indicator here for me. A little window is telling us that we can use F4 to try changing detection framework. That could be uh, useful if you struggle to find a good selector. F2 classic for pause the configuration and also other options that you are probably familiar with only the design looks a little bit different so let's click to indicate the element 
use cases. So you can go on and hit enter to confirm your selection, but I guess you want to explore all the possibilities that you have now. If you move your mouse around now and click on something, this will indicate a new anchor for your element. If you feel like your element is some empty input field or something that repeats and will need an anchor, you can indicate an anchor. If you're unhappy with your selection, you can click this little rubbish bin and indicate the target again. If you want to overall cancel the operation, you feel free to hit escape and just get out of there. Let's check this new window that appeared here on the right side. So you can see that there are three main possible targeting methods of uh, selecting your target, right? So selector, fuzzy selector and image. If the specified method is ticked, like it's used, then it will be used to indicate uh, the target. So selector is a standard way of finding an element. Fuzzy selector is using um, accuracy scale that allows for slight changes in the selector. You can read about fuzzy selectors in a link that I provided in the video description. The two selectors, the selector and the fuzzy selector, they can be adjusted also by opening the UI Explorer, the first one definitely. So if I'm unhappy and I want to go back to the where, what I'm used to, the open UI Explorer and adjust it, then I can do it by clicking this. But that's something you probably know or you do and experiment with that. And the last one, image, is used in case these selectors will fail. Then uh, the robot will try to find an image and click on an image. Depending on how you wish, you can turn on and off these all target options. So in case you only want to use image, then you can leave the image here and you will see when there's this little little icon that uh, UiPad was able to find or the, or the UiPad was able to find the thing on the screen. So maybe a little recap, the order of these types is crucial. UiPad will try to find these targets from top down depending on if they are turned on. So in this case, uh, it will go first to search for fuzzy selector. In case there will be no match, it will go and try to search for an image. So this is a really neat fallback in case your application will somehow, the, the selector will change, then UiPath will try to use image automation. Of course, this also may be not what you're looking for. So in case you want to go just classic selector, you keep only the first option on and turn off the last two. If you automate in browser, then by default the setup is like that. There is always fuzzy selector on, the selector is not on, and then image as a fallback. If you don't like it, you can change this default configuration in the settings of your project. If you do some changes in your selector and you want to just validate it if it's okay, then you will find out that this is done automatically in case you just change something. So let's try it like this. Um, I will change the selector click somewhere else and now you see it's searching again and it's validated and it found it because of this icon. Or if these auto apply changes is not on, you can just click validate and this will validate your selectors. So these were some basics. Uh, there are a few more buttons that I did not talk about, but this will be your homework to try and experiment with them, which is the best way how to learn how they work. For now, let's just hit confirm. There we go, a click activity with the target specified. Now, if you hit the hamburger menu, how I call it, you will also notice the differences. Using edit target, will open the target indication tool, the thing that we just were working with. And with modern activities, you can also benefit of object repository. And also here we have the option to add this element to object repository. One cool option here is add verification. Uh, we will talk about it a little bit later. So let's go over the properties. So the whole section called common, which has quite self-explanatory names, is not bringing any major improvements. The only interesting difference is that timeout is now uh, counted in seconds, not in milliseconds. So uh, be aware of that. The next section is input. The click type and mouse button define what kind of click you want to use. Cursor motion type sets if you want your cursor to move instantly or to mimic human and go in a smooth move. Go ahead and try that, it's pretty funny. The subsection target 
contains these. Click offset, this is probably something that you are familiar with. And this allows to set where in an area of an element should it click. And if necessary, you can define offset in pixels. So you can, for example, indicate that uh, if, you, if you put it here, you can indicate that the mouse or the click has to be done in top left corner and so on. But this is something you are most probably familiar from the classic one. So it won't be hard from, for you. We can see selector and fuzzy selector there. And that is where you can also check them. You can edit them in expression editor or the selector in the uh, selector editor. So, so as I say, in the old style. What is this native text? Native text is used for some legacy apps where classic selectors don't work. And that's all I know. If you take the responsive website checkbox on, your anchor is set to left from the element, will be also searched from top of the element. I'm not sure if I would ever use it, but it may come handy one day. So the targeting methods allow you to set on and off some of the methods. So that was the same that we did in the target indication. Wait for page load is also not a new thing. You can set to wait for the page to fully load and only after that execute the click activity or also you can set it otherwise. Where it comes to be interesting is this window selector. By default, it is the copy of your app slash browser activity selector, but you can hack the activity to work with totally other window by changing this selector. When it can come handy, so let's say you automate some process where you click on a lot of buttons and in one moment some pop-up will appear. And that pop-up is coming from a different application. If you try to indicate, you may get a pop-up that the indicated element does not belong to the target browser or target application. It is because it does not belong under the browser app scope that you work in. So instead of having one new use application slash browser scope to just perform this one click, you can do that, of course. Uh, you can set up first the window selector and then set the selector that you want to click on but not using the targeting indication tool, rather opening the selector editor from properties and selector. So if you want to, you can change this one and then you can follow up and change this one selector. And this will totally hack the, the scope that you're working in. Let's call it a workaround. So the super next cool thing to check out is the verify execution thing. And you can activate it from the hamburger menu when you click add verification. So to verify that the click was successful, I need to go where I'm supposed to go. So I click use cases and then here in the hamburger menu or here, I will indicate the verification target. So I'm indicating something that I expect to be on the screen whilst this is done. So let's, let's take this header for an example. Again, you can play around with the selector, with the target, with anchor and so on. I will go on and click confirm. So now the whole bunch of new stuff appeared here in properties in verify execution. You see it's coming longer and longer. And most of them we know if I open also the target section, uh, it's again the same copy like for the original target. So this is like a verify target. Some, most of it we know, so maybe I can just collapse this one. But what is interesting is this retry. So in case the click will not bring uh, the state of the app to the desired place and the, the, the verification selector won't be found. You can turn this on and the robot will try to click again to the same place and check till the timeout is gone uh, and check if this happened. So sometimes if you feel like sometimes the robot is uh, not clicking where it should and sometimes you, it clicks but it doesn't click and maybe it will be enough just to click once more. This is a cool thing and you can just turn it on like this. You can also specify if you can, uh, if to verify if the element appeared or disappeared or if uh, text changed or it visually changed and so on. So some of the other options that we can uh, check. So, and this is where it comes to the end. So let's not forget about the last properties. The input and output element, of course, allows you to store it the element as a variable or reuse some of the element that you stored in the different activities that is already in the variable of UI element. And the options 
are also to define the input mode. So in the previous video, I was talking about that you can set for all the activities within the scope one input mode, like a hardware events, that means normal ones, then simulate, simulate click or simulate type or Windows messages. And there are also some other options here. So if I want to bypass the settings of the scope, I can do it here. Also, by the way, and that goes also for the use browser, there is a new option to set the input mode for Chromium API. But maybe this is for you to self-study a little bit, or maybe for a next video. So that was Click. Quite a lot of information of a one single activity, right? But I hope you learned something new. If you do have any questions, please type them in the comment and I will answer them. So once again, thank you for watching, thank you for your attention. All the necessary related info should be under the video description. Please come check the other links also. We have a nice community forum where you can also ask questions in case you are in doubts and maybe in case on the UiPath forum nobody is answering your questions. That can happen. And you can sign up to RPA Fridays to get every time an email if there is a new video so you will never miss anything new. We also are on LinkedIn, Facebook, so please, if you love it, go and support it. Thanks a lot and I wish you happy automation.